All right, I think, I think we're live. Welcome to the show. Um, this is rocking and rolling. All right, I'll just turn this way for now. Um, welcome everybody. This is not my good side. All right, that was that was fun. That was cool. Um, Crystal here, so so fab. I want to use the other chair. This other chair is shorter. All right, welcome. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Um, anyone who does not know me, I am Crystal. I'm the creator. Oh, we have someone. I don't know if I can see the comments. Um, so if you're commenting, maybe I can mute myself and look on the computer. Um, I know some friends of mine are watching too, so they'll be. Uh, so the camera's over here. There's the camera. All right. So they can chime in to answer any questions you guys may have. Okay. Um, let's get started. So why are we here today? Oh, I have some fun. That's my um, Instagram. So find us on Instagram. Facebook. Facebook should be so, so fab by Crystal. Um, what else we got? Uh, I also have YouTubes. The YouTubes. All right. And I'm going to take those off. And then we're just going to keep the little logo on my shoulder. Let's see. Let's see if I can see any comments or anything. We'll show them live. I'm going to mute this. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm Crystal. Um, thank you guys so much for being here, for even... Um, Hey, okay, I see Sherry Ann. Um, I can't see the comments from the, the screen of the camera. So what are we doing? Why are we here? We are in quarantine, obviously, um, and taking it seriously. So we're going to make, I hate this glare right here. Okay, I'm going to look this way. There's still a glare. The glass is glare. Um, of course, I'm wearing a dress that I've made. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Um, Crystal, uh, teach sewing classes. Enough about me. Let's get to why we're here. We're making masks. Um, there's a need for masks and I'm going to teach you how to make the masks. Um, these masks are not, um, protection from you catching the virus. It's supposed to help to stop the spread. So if you have any symptoms, if you have a cough, like if you're sneezing, like, please, Wherever you go, try to wear these, okay? Because we want everybody to stay safe. Um, I've made a few already today. I actually stopped uh, mid-mask over here on this machine. So without further ado, we're gonna get jump right in with both feet. I actually, maybe Sunday I'm gonna go live again. So definitely share this if anybody can't make it um, so they can um, figure it out or learn and there'll be a replay available too. I also made one with a pocket so if they want to put like a paper towel uh, I hear coffee filters work um, or an actual carbon filters you can order on Amazon. Um, the CDC says that the masks do help um, slow down the spread like they don't you know like if I am wearing one I it's not gonna protect me from catching it but it's gonna stop me from spreading it all over so that's that. Without further ado, let's get to it. Um, I'm gonna switch into, that's one, that's camera A, and then for camera B, no, that did it wrong. All right, let's go. So camera A, and then B. No, that was backwards too. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. All right, camera A, Nope. All right. Camera A is going to be overhead. Yes. Uh, that's A. B. Ha! Can't tell me nothing. All right. So let's get started. We have our workspace right here. So you're just going to see me up over here or down here. Um, for fabric, what are the what are the supplies we need? Um, we need. Hi, everybody. Let me look down. Andrea, Beth, Una, Jackie. Hey, Jackie. 
Khalif, Adrian, and Sherry. And hey, everybody. All right, I'm going to keep looking to see who's watching. Um, well, thank you guys for watching again. Okay, so this ruler is my best friend. It is a 6 by 24 ruler, 6 inches by 24, and it's see-through. That way, because we're going to make, um, we're gonna, you're going to need two pieces of fabric, an outside and a lining. Um, it could be the same fabric twice. Um, so it's going to need to be six inches by nine inches. Let's say you are a Cubs fan. You, when you cut your fabric, you're going to make sure that the nine inch way, um, is where you want your pattern to be facing. So it has to be six inches by nine inches. So here's your nine and here's your six. So think of the horizon horizontal. That's your nine inch. This is your six inch um, straight up and down. So you're gonna cut, I've cut a lot of cool fabrics. Um, let's say um, you're not from Michigan and you're a Buckeye fan. We've got some Buckeye fabric too. I have some Nationals um, fabrics and stuff like that. But let's say you just have your plain piece of fabric. Let's start with just a piece of fabric. I'm just folding, this is a yard of fabric. You can fold your yard in half. And I hate that they put this um, on the Ankara fabrics, on the African fabrics. They put that big old piece of the, this big old sticker on it. Like, we know where this is from. Like, we didn't need that big old sticker. Okay, so fold your fabric in half. Because we're, we're going to cheat. We're just going to cut two pieces at once. So what this see-through ruler does, now, if you don't have a, flip it over like that. If you don't have a, I love this also. Here we go. That is a uh, rotary cutter. And this is actually a self-healing mat also. If you don't have a rotary cutter and a self-healing mat, you're gonna go old school and you're gonna use chalk. Where is the camera? There it is, chalk. <laughs> so you can either, so since this ruler is six inches wide, we can just go ahead and look for the number nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how wide it is. We're gonna look on this see-through mirror for the number nine. I keep calling it a mirror. It's the see-through ruler. See number nine right here? So from one to nine, that's nine inches. And here that's six inches. So we can just put this right on down. And this is gonna keep us honest with where our straight lines are. See how you can line that up to there? And that's showing you that your edge is a straight edge, so you're not cutting like a crooked, crooked cockeyed mask. But so we can draw either with, let's just start here. So we're at number nine. We can go boom, boom. And nine is right across from 15 on here. Oops. See how we made a perfect square rectangle? Um, but while. Let's, we have to move this out of the way. All right, don't fall. It's like, you know that game where you had to push the coins? Like, the more I push stuff, the other stuff falls off on the other side. So I'm trying to avoid that. Um, the other way, you can just line this up to the number nine. See how I'm lining this up? So the number nine is right here now. So one to nine, this is actually the way we should have started off. All right, see how the number nine is right here? So we're holding it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The nine is right here. So now we know, coming right across, this is gonna be six by nine, because it's boom, there's our square. So now that I've drawn it with the chalk, I could just cut that out. Or if you have this nice rotary cutter, you when you use this thing, you wanna kinda almost be vertical. Um, you don't wanna just, gingerly slide it that way you really have to put some elbow grease like on martin you got to go to work on myra's feet remember that oh that's my favorite episode so you are just following you're not supposed to cut towards yourself do not cut towards yourself always cut away because you kind of want this thing to sink down as you cut oh we, we did all right we did all right Wow, what a great job. If you guys are following along, please drop pictures in the comments. All right, see, look at how easy that was. 
we have two equal size pieces just like that all right so that, that that's all and also what you need and we need some elastic um you can get it can be the quarter inch thick it could be three eighths inch thick I bought this thing a long time ago. I don't even know why I bought this much, but here we are, I have it. So you need two, just one 14 inch piece, which will be two seven inch pieces. So you're just gonna, you can do that right on this. And what I recommend also, I love these little bitty scissors. These are so cute. Um, you never, you always want to segregate your scissors. So 14 inches right here. Do not cut fabric or anything that's not fabric with like, so fabric sister, scissors are for fabric and fabric only, okay? We, you, you do want to segregate your scissors. You don't want to cross contamination because if you, like, if you were, if I were to cut this um, elastic with my fabric scissors, it's going to, scissors, it's going to make them dull faster. I want my fabric scissors to stay very sharp. So I'm only going to cut fabric with my fabric scissors. All right, so I cut one 14 inch piece and I'm just going to cut this in half to make two seven inch pieces. And now we are going to the machine. So anyone have any questions? Uh, of course, I have my teens. You know, yes. I, I might have Chicago Bears. Anyway, I have Nationals and I have the caps. Um, yeah, any questions? Because now is the fun part. is threading your sewing machine. So go grab all of your sewing machine stuff. But So to recap, you just need um, 6 inches by 9 inches. Make sure your nine, your nine inches um, is going to be the horizontal. Because see, look, that's nine inches by six inches. Well, it, we're going to, oh, I, I don't even want to tell you how interesting it's going to get. All right, let's move on to the sewing machine part. Now grab your machine and let's do some threading. Now I'm going to reset this all up. And you can do this while um, watching TV, like cutting, cutting. You can cut these fabrics while you're watching TV. Oh, I forgot to. If anyone's wondering why I'm dressed up, it's because I'm going to a happy hour after this. Um, we're doing another in-home happy hour. Uh, there's a group of us, and this is my karaoke machine. So if anyone has any song requests, I will sing. Um, for you guys, because I love you guys. Thank you for watching. But yeah, I went and got my karaoke machine out of the car so we can have some fun at this happy hour a little bit later. But yeah, I didn't know if I'd have time to change in between this video and the happy hour, so I just got all dressed up. And again, yes, it's for an in-home happy hour. I got dressed up, yes. Take this seriously, guys. All right, so let's change this setup so you can actually see the machine. I'm going to take this thing out and not drop anything. Let's see. Please bear with me. If anybody wants to hop on the karaoke and sing. There we go. So this, actually, let's just go back to me. All right, let's just go back to me while I do this because I don't want to make you dizzy. They did that on the Today Show the other day. They made, Martha Stewart made me so dizzy. She was cooking something in her home kitchen. And I was like, uh-oh, it wasn't set up right. All right, so we want you to be able to, to see, see this uh, sewing machine. So we need the... Yes, all right, Amazon, uh, this has to go down a little bit. I hate um, unscrewing these things because it's never quite pans out for me. All right, I think, I think we're okay. So let's do this again. Select channel A and B. I'm going to be B. The machine is going to be A. A. B. All right. I'm going to try not to 
get in the way. How am I just trying to get away? All right. I was in mid um, face mask. That's all right. We're just going to start from the basics. And then I left you guys hanging. One time I did do a, a how to thread your machine um how to thread your machine video and then I quit when the one machine got stuck so we're gonna go back to that machine one of these days and I'll tell you what happened what to do when your machine gets stuck because that's half the battle a lot of times all right so I'm using a brother machine and it has a, a drop bobbin so this is the one of the easier newer models um so every machine has the same basic parts and the, oh there's Kobe right there behind us um we have the spool this holds the spool spool pin next we have a thread guide there's a little thread guide this little metal piece right behind there that's a thread guide this is a thread guide but that's used for the bobbin this is also a thread guide this little it's just a a hook and then we have the front of the machine the tension is in here there's a number three right here on the machine will it let me zoom in oh yes it will See that number? That's a number three right there. It looks like an eight, but that's a number three. There's a number. So two is telling you this arrow's down. Three is telling you it's going around the corner. Most machines have these. Pay attention. Up here, number four, it usually has a, it goes around the corner. You see that arrow that goes around the corner? It's number four. And then usually there is another thread guide here. Let's see if I can take the phone off and get it back on here. Let's give you guys a close-up. Where y'all from? Where y'all from? Where we watching from? Where we watching from? Anybody want to say anything? Um, so this is your spool pin. This is where the thread goes. This, these dotted lines show you if you were... So this dot says, hey, if you're threading a bobbin, then that's what you want to do. If you're threading for regular sewing, this is what you want to do. Shall we do a bobbin first? Let's do a bobbin first. What the heck is a bobbin? I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going to screw this back on. Sorry for my hand right in the way. I'm just showing you the different sewing machine parts. The, they're each um, stitch has two threads. This part is... I cheat and I buy... Um, I actually buy pre-wound bobbins from the store. These, you can just buy these pre-wound. They have all-purpose thread in them. So um, you're, you're, you're good on that. Let's just go over the parts of the machine right quick. Right quick. So <laughs> I just put this back. So over on the side, this is your spool. This, this is your hand wheel. This turns, when you turn this towards you, some of your machines have a line right here on the top. This line on the top lets you know you want this facing straight up. That means the needle's out. Now, if I turn this towards me, look at that. The needle goes up and down, okay? That's your needle position. So all the way up, the needle's all the way out. Another thing moves. That guy is going up and down too. That's the uptake lever. That's the, all these parts are helping the thread move through the machine. So always start position one, turn this guy towards you till this is right at the top. Line that up with that. That guy is gonna be up, the um, uptake lever, and your needle, needle is gonna be all the way up. You never wanna move or thread um, when the needle is in motion on its way down or on its way back up. You always want it to be up and out of the machine before you make any moves oops oh yeah I, I i defaulted this to to mute all right so to thread a bobbin we're gonna follow the directions on top and you don't you if you want to thread a bobbin you want to thread it you want to empty the bobbin see it always falls does a quick fall and roll all right, so this goes right there, and we're just gonna put our thread right here, and then we're just gonna follow number one. So we're, we're following the circled one now. So it goes through this pin under here, and then it hooks 
it hooks around that to go that way. Hooks around that to go like that. I know that's very scientific. But I'm going to show you the motions. So I like to grab this with two fingers to hook it under here. Hook that and hook that. And then for the bobbin, we're going to, it, it has to hook around that that way. That makes sense. And it looks and then we take this up. You can take it off. So this has to go up like this. It goes up like that. Not down, up like that. And you slide that on. You hold this tight. Now you hold that tight. Hold that tight. Slide this whole casing over and push, and it's gonna twirl. When you slide this whole little um, unit to the right, it disengages the needle. Because now you see the needle's not moving at all. I guess that broke on its own. How are everybody doing? Did anybody fall asleep? Okay, Marilyn. The tools, yes. I will post the tools. All right. Ooh. All right, that's good enough. Slide that back over. Un there you go. You can, oh, a trick that my mom taught me is to always cut at an angle. So cut angle. Dang, I don't think you saw that. Cut the thread at an angle. All right, so let's put our bobbin in. That's the part. So this is the throat plate. And the throat plate is telling you, well, there's some important pieces down here. So you've got the feed dogs. I'll take my foot off. This is your foot, your presser foot. So these are feed dogs. These are called feed dogs. They actually grab the fabric for you. See that? See how the thing moves back? That's pushing the fabric back for you. Um, the needle is here. And then these little grids tell you how far away you are from the needle. So this number one is saying you're one inch from the needle. And then five eighths. Five eighths has this circle there because that's like a standard five eighths seam. We're gonna use um, what are we using? We're using like a quarter, the edge of the foot. So there's a lever. Where is it? There it is. This is your um up. This is your uptake lever. No, that's not. That's your presser foot lever. You slide, you slam. That slams down and up. Um, a lot of times when you're changing your feet that lever is what you put down on the foot. That makes the connection of the fabric with the foot, the foot, the fabric, okay? So usually there's a hook right here. There's a hook right here, that, that bar. There's a bar there and then there's a hook here. You line that bar up with your hook and then you lower that lever. And it, that's what brings it up and down. All right, so this guy, you're just gonna slide this over and that it made it pop up so you could take this off. We're gonna put the, bob, the bobbin in. There's two, two threads to each stitch, a top and a bottom. This is your bottom, this is your bobbin. Oh, I can move that out of the way. Um, so you want this to, it looks like a P. You want the tail to unwind on that side, not on that side. It has to go this way. So you just drop that down and then it has to feed there's usually a hook this one is this whole hook here is you're just gonna guide it under this hook not above it make sure it catches on that hook and then you just feed it through this and cut it there's a blade little bitty blade you cut that blade and then you put this back in usually there's a an angle slide turn off nope the tv oh here's the remote All right, threading the top. So again, we're gonna grab under to go through that one thread guide. There's always a thread guide up top. There's always, you go straight down afterwards and then you come around the bottom. And then there's always this lever. When you go back on the right and to the left, usually the uptake lever has an angle that it catches automatically. Make sure it catches on that hook. 
And then there's one more thread guide, needle thread guide that's above the needle. I like to grab this like this and swipe it across. There you go. And then, like my mom said, cut at an angle and then thread front to back. And I just like to, it goes right on front to back. And there you go. And then I like to, you want your thread to go through the foot. There's like a toe right there to that foot. Now, the needle. I put the, these little um, stickers. A lot of times you've seen people use these stickers on um, like canned goods and like, you know, like the cute little messages and for baby showers and all that stuff. These are also good to stick on your machine so you know what needle you were using the last time you um, sewed. So I have a universal needle that's 7010. So that's the size needle, which is perfect. Um, this fabric is cotton and universal cotton is um, what we can use for this needle. You always want um, needle, thread, fabric cohesion. You would not use silk, a silk needle on leather. How do you think that's going to work out for you? It will not work out for you. So make sure you're using the right kind of thread and the right kind of needle for your project. The needle and the fabric must um, match up or else you're going to have some trouble. Back to this. I think we're, are we ready to sew? Who wants to answer that question? Are we ready to sew? We got our thread. We got our needle. The answer is no. No. All right. I didn't mean to say it that mean. We're not ready to sew. You always, always, always. I don't know where my scissors went. You always want to do a test run. You want to see how, how your, what stitch are you using? Are they too close together? Are they too far apart? Hey, Janie joined. Um, thanks to Janie, my old office mate. She's like, she hooks a sister up. She's the one that told me about blogs. I would have never known about blogs if it weren't for her. And she actually told me about this wonderful face mask project. So thank you, Janie sending you guys masks you and the little ones masks so you always always want to test this first all right so I just you know cut a little piece just like so I'm gonna fold it in half since we're going to through two layers we're, and I'm just as the seam allowance so seam allowance you can either be all the way over here or right over here your goal is to just keep this lined up all right and normally, let's stitch. So this is our stitch, all the stitches for this machine. And you're not done. There's more up there, but we don't need all that. We just, we want, so for this one, zero, zero, this needle position is on the left. We want a center needle position. So we're just going to switch to number two. All right. And what I tell people to do is locate their pedal when you're doing your test. Now, your three steps. The needle is out. Yes, it is. You're going to lower that foot. And you need to hear that noise when you lower your foot. And then you can keep your arms away and just push the pedal slowly. Actually, let me put this on medium speed. See how the machine grabs the fabric for you? You really don't have to do much, okay? Now, for this machine, it stops with the needle down, all the way down. So this one has a button where I push the button and it'll take the needle out for me. But if I didn't have this button, I would have to turn this towards me. So this line on the side over here is back at the top. Then, because I know that the needle is done with this stitch. So it's not on the way down. It's not on the way up. It's all the way out. And it's not coming back down. So then you lift. And I pull to the back. And then there's always a little blade on the side of your machine. You can use that to cut both threads. So now you have... A straight line there you go I like the, the width the stitch width the stitch length um, a lot of times this is your um, width and length um, since this is a straight stitch this doesn't really make that big of a difference but um, 2.5 is this is a standard nine times out of ten your machine is going to be set on the standard this is the tension dial and this is telling you always between like five four and three there's lines there letting you know that that's the norm for anything all right all right we spent the first half hour on threading the machine and we we cut out our so for people that just joined us hi i'm crystal so so fab uh let's put the instagram back up bam oh we just covered me up all right so we're, we're making face masks here's a face mask 
I was actually in mid mask on that one. Um, very simple steps. So first step is to um, cut uh, two pieces of fabric. Uh, you want to use fabric, cotton fabric, um, tightly woven. You don't want to use stuff with holes in it, clearly, obviously. Okay, no holes in the fabric. Maybe I need to say this louder for the people. No holes in the fabric. All right, you guys, no holes. All right. Hey, you guys. Hey. What does the number two, tip, number two stitch look like? That's what Jackie said. So um, the different stitch numbers, this is just a straight stitch. So um, when you're looking on your machine, I like this microphone, you guys. All right. On your sewing machine, I'm going to zoom in. All the stitches um, are marked here. So let's look at the number two. So these are all just, it's just telling you that it's a straight stitch. Um, so number four, that's a stretch. Number five is zigzag. Number six is elastic. Um, so the difference is, so the two and the five, if you wanted yours to 2.5, you would lower it to one if you wanted your stitches closer together. Like if you wanted to go like da 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 um, two and a half is just a regular stitch length. And then if you put it, I think four and a half might be the highest number. They'll be really, really far away. So for my machine, a regular straight stitch is the stitch number two. But everybody's machine is different. Always refer to your manual too if you have a question about your machine too. But yeah, you're just doing, and I'll show you the difference um, in the different stitch, stitch lengths. So if we moved it up, Oh, here, I'll do it on these things. All right, let's take it up to five. Five is usually a base stitch. That's like a temporary stitch. They're really far apart. Their job is just to hold the, um, so I'm gonna, before I take this off, I'm gonna turn this so that this is up here, all right? We're gonna lift, and then remember, move this out. Use this blade to cut both. Always do that, see, now. You can see the difference. These stitches are a lot further apart. And this was the two and a half. See how kind of they're closer together? You wouldn't want this stitch on a seam for an outfit because look, you, you can kind of see it. Like you can, there'll be gaps in between. This is just to a temporary, like if you're like, oh, does this fit? And then you would go make it tighter. Let's show you the number of the smallest. Oh, point 0.2 is as small as you can go. It doesn't even look like it's moving. That's crazy. Alright, I just alright, so remember, don't just take your project off. Make sure you take the needle all the way out. And then because if you try to move this and you get resistance, that means that the needle wasn't finished. So you need to ooh, look at that. So that's really 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 tight really tight so that's the difference in the stitches so we just want regular old two and a half and see oh you see the circle so the circle is telling you that that's the standard all right good question uh blah 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 any questions any questions that i missed please ask it again um, if you were asked, going to ask who I'm wearing, I'm wearing me. I made this dress. Okay, let's get back to it. All right, grab your two pieces of fabric, and we grab two of your 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 two pieces of um, elastic. So right sides together. You can most of these fabrics they're the same right side or wrong side, but if you're actually sewing clothes, I highly recommend you put a a small little W on your wrong side so you know what you're doing what is right and wrong at all times especially if you're using black because I've made some huge mistakes because I didn't mark right or wrong because I thought okay it's the same on either side doesn't matter it matters okay so we're just gonna put these together like a sandwich two together you're we're gonna put and oh, let me show you my clips I love these clips clips instead of using pins I like to use clips but you, if you're still on the pins train, you're, that's good too. Oh, what'd you guys have for lunch? I, I was, today flew, I just had a banana. Like, I need like food, food. I have two, 
uh, pork chops in there I could make, but yeah, I didn't eat food food. I had a smoothie for breakfast. I was going to make pancakes after, but today flew. So let me know. What did you guys eat today? Oh, us ones that you look good on a do-rag. Ha ha. All right. I owe Dre ties too. I'm supposed to be working on some bow ties too. All right. So this guy's going to go flat on one of your corners but we, we will do that when we get to it all right so right now we are going to sew we're going to start we're going to leave like a two inch opening so we're going to start here we're going to go boom 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 we're going to do a pivot move but in these four corners are going to be um our pieces of these are going to be on the inside there so our our pieces of elastic are going to be in, in on the inside so start let's see so this is, if you fold it in half, you'll see this is like the halfway point. Start about an inch from your halfway point. So I'm gonna um, use the edge of the foot as my guide, okay? So I'm gonna try to keep um, the fabric lined up with the edge of this foot here. And then this at an angle on the inside, like a sandwich, this is going right here. Actually, I'll show you what it looks like with the white one just so you could see the difference. Um, so if we were using white, this would be, I guess we could use white. White gets dirty fast. It would go just like this, um, and then this one goes right on top, okay? But we are actually gonna use black, okay? And I like to hold these. You don't have to hold these. You can throw the little clip on there. So. I'm just going to go forward. It's not a race. You don't have to go that fast. Now, when you get close, you're just going to go. I can go a little slower. Now, here, I like to do a reverse just to keep the elastic, give it a little reinforcement. So, the reverse stitch, it looks like a little U-turn. And a lot of times, you have to hold it down. Some machines, they have a lever here. You hold the lever down while you press your foot. Now, we're going to come forward some more. I actually like to come to right when the fabric is under the foot, like where these two teeth meet in that foot. Now, I'm going to turn this to make sure my needle is actually all the way down instead of up. So, needle's down. Now, we're going to lift the foot and we're going to do a pivot. You always want to pivot with your needle all the way down because you don't want this to get off track. You want all these layers to stay exactly where they are. If you do this and the needle is out, it's, it's going to come loose and you're going to make a hole. So make sure that needle is down. Oh, and you could do a scratch. You could do a record. All right. Just kidding. All right. Make sure you put that foot back down, though. And now we can keep coming straight. I threw one on the floor. And see, I'm just using this foot as my guide. And now we're going to look for that other piece. And look, it's not exactly straight on each other. I, do I look concerned? No, it's not the end of the world, okay? It's, it's, it's all right. As long as we're sewing two pieces of fabric together, there will not be any holes. All right, so now we're going to get this angled piece back. Make sure this is angled. Put that back there. And then if you want to put the clip on it, you can. Just make sure this is not twisted underneath either like make sure this is nice and flat and now we're just going to go straight so we get to that corner i'm going to go back and then come forward just a tad bit more one more there we go needle turn make sure it's down any more questions coffee and yogurt and granola okay chips and salsa pasta maybe i did want to arepa Maybe I didn't want to know because that's making me hungry now. That is making me hungry. Send food. Send food. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Um, feel free to chime in and say more stuff. I'm going to keep um, looking. Every See, look, it's a little bit crooked, but I'm just going to use rough justice. You, you've heard Judge Million use the term rough justice. We're just going to use rough justice to keep it straight you can even come in here and where are my scissors my fabric scissors 
I put them somewhere and then they are hiding. They're like, I'm right here. You just can't see me. But I do have other scissors right here in this drawer. I guess it pays to have like six versions of the same thing. You can do a rough justice cut if you want. You don't really have to. All right, so I'm gonna grab this other, another piece of elastic, because we're, we're at the other part. Just keep making sure you have your two pieces. Turn. See how this is, I'm just gonna cut this. All right, move that out the way. All right, put that back down, put a little bit backwards. It just has to be generally straight, okay? All right, so I'm grabbing this last piece, putting that at another angle. And don't worry, you will not run over your fingers. Like, it, it's so that you can't fit your finger in there. All right, now remember, we want to leave a two-inch space because it's going to be hard to get your fingers in there to turn it all inside out. So make sure you um, leave enough space to turn this baby inside out. All right, I think I'm gonna stop here. All right, so we that's part one, two, three, maybe there's two more parts. It, it gets a little confusing after this. So make sure the needle is out. So turn that so that that needle is all the way up. Lift, and now it's time to turn, flip it inside out. So let's flip this inside out. And I guess th this would be the time you could, if you wanted to put like any kind of lavender or anything. I don't know if they recommend any of that, but no. So yeah, we are flipping it inside out. Chopsticks are really good for um, hitting these corners. Making sure I'm not in the way. So push through, push all the way through on all the sides. Push through, push through. It is quiet out there. All right, so this is the first part of the mask. So you're gonna have, oh, this is so pretty. And I can, uh, can I send you guys fabric? Let's see, the fabric stash, um, use your fabric stash. I know if you sew, you have a lot of extra fabric. So you wanna, where the hole is, just make sure this is nice. Just fold, fold these edges in. They like they almost naturally fold in on their own. Um, you can clip any extra strings, but yeah, just make sure these are just neatly folded in. You can press it if you like. It's definitely not necessary because now we need to make it do these folds. See the three folds. You're just gonna do three folds down. One, two, three folds. Three, the number the three is what they say is most effective. Um, so we're gonna go with what they say. What they say, whoever they are. No, just kidding. It's CDC is the they, by the way. So we are going to just, so I like to start, I'm just gonna start about a third, cause we're gonna do three, a third, one, like boom, boom, boom. So I'm just gonna fold like a little, like a crease. It's like a crease. You're doing like a crease. See that crease? See that crease? You see that crease? It's just a crease. It's a crease. Do I need to do that again? So it's straight, I'm just doing a crease. And you can put a pin there. Um, the pins hold better than the, the clips on this part. So then middle, I'm gonna do another one. Or you could just do three on one side, three on the other. So you can just go fold, fold, 
no, you gotta get up here. I wanna make sure you can see it. So we, we're, we're doing fold, 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 three folds. They may not be all like crazy, crazy even. Now I'm gonna overthink this little fold. A little fold, another little fold, and then a third little fold. So you got three, three folds. And you have to make sure whichever way you fold one side, you fold the other side. So we fold it this way. So you're going to go fold. That's why we did one fold first. So to make you um, remember which direction you folded the first. But it wasn't that big of a fold. So fold, fold, fold. So we got three folds in a row. Let's make a little fold another little fold and then another little fold there we go three little folds boom 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 and i'm gonna put this here is anybody making it fold 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 this is going a little dig out your sewing machine okay there'll be good sales going on on fabrics hmm i wonder you um, I know people were saying they've used like clean sheets because um, the thread count on sheets are really high so it's um, that's a good kind of filter of sheets um, so if you have any clean sheets that you haven't used in ages um, I've seen people saying they've used that um, I don't know where you are because just this is just something like you know to not shop um, I'm not sure if I can send any fabric I have a lot of fabric um, but yeah, fabric sales, they, I mean, they would love your business. Um, call your local fabric store too. And, um, cause I think Michael's, they were even doing like, you can order online and they'll, um, you can do the curve pickup to the contact, contact list. That's what I recommend. Any kind of contact list, um, deliveries or pickups. Um, I'm going to figure this out for the post office too. Okay, so now we're just going to sew all the way around. And we're going to sew around twice. Okay, and we're going to just try to be on this edge here. So I'm going to put the needle, the fabric, like a little bit closer in from the edge. And I'm going to make sure this clothes, this, this little, the, our little opening is nice and flat on top of each other. And then I'm just going to let the machine, remember, you let the machine grab the fabric. Don't you try to push it or force it. Don't, well, you're going to probably try to have to force it when we get over to this, um, when we get to this. Remember, needle in, make sure the needle's in for this pivot right here. When we get to these, um, what happened to my first fold? Make sure your, your folds are still intact. You get to this part because you may have to help shove it through because this is a rough part for the machine. So that's another thing too, like um, when people are wondering what kind of machines to get. When you're buying like a more expensive machine, they just have way more stitches and the motor is kind of more powerful because some machines, they can't sew leather, you know, if you, or even denim sometimes too. So um definitely the machines but a basic machine can sew through anything too all right so almost at the edge and then i'm gonna turn do not sew over pins or these clips like these clips can't fit under here but pins can so i'm just making sure my folds are still folded as i come under here make sure your folds are still folded now I can cut this all right make sure the needle is in again all the way down pivot and then we're back at the beginning but I'm gonna try to follow the line all the way around oh my god this is so cute you guys um, what is the width of the elastic so i have both um this one's three eighths but um the quarter inch thick um elastic um is what's recommended too so this is quarter inch thick uh i had a 
heck of it so you could see because I have this big super size me roll of it um I don't even remember where I think I bought this in Philly um at a fabric store yeah this is I have 144 yards of this stuff that's a lot um but yeah so I bought it in a big roll like this but normally like when you see it at the fabric store I'll show you what the what it looks like the packages here we go these are what the packages normally look like maybe I'll show you on this so yeah cotton swimwear elastic um, or it's just regular elastic uh, um, but it's same thing it's quarter inch braided elastic so that's the width of the elastic good question all right, so I'm gonna go a second round around this guy. And I'm just following the line that's already there. And remember, I'm not forcing it through, I'm just letting the machine grab it. Yeah. Then I'm pivoting. But yeah, I'm just like, it's like your like little, like fingertip, just feed it in there. That's how I like to do it. I just like to feed it in there. Thank you guys for watching, Donna, Laura, it's good questions. Like, let's get these masks. I've had a friend reach out and she is in need of a mask. All right. So when you get to the end, since we went around the whole thing twice, we don't have to backstitch it. What backstitching does is attack, it um, It locks in your last stitch. It just kind of makes a little knot. Um, so make sure the needle is out. So turn this so that, feel for that line. Some machines have that line, some don't. And then lift. I kind of, I like to grab it out to the back and use the blades to cut. Sometimes it just, goes on and on okay yay so we made a mask clip and clip all right so I'm gonna start another mask from the step of there we go there's a mask and it has the folds did we lose any folds nope we have all three we have all three folds all right so let's make a buckeye one so remember we are, cause now we'll, we'll do one with a pattern on it. So pattern, so this is nine inches. I'll show you on, nope, you can't see that. I'll show you on this guy. Um, so this is the nine inches. So we have nine inches by six inches, six inches. So this is the six inch side this is your nine inch side right there, six by nine. Um, all right, so we're putting this face down. For one face up, the one, the right side is face up. Remember, it's not this way, it's this way when you cut. So this is our nine inch side. And then put the other one right on face down. Um, I'm hearing denim can be used too. So um, if, if, or if you want, um, if you want like a denim outside and then the buckeye on the inside, um, you can also do that too. Um, nothing's wrong with that. And then you have your two, these are two seven inch pieces of elastic, um, quarter inch or three eighths. Either one works. I'm using three eighths because that's what I had. Um, these are also the same. These are used for bra straps too. Um, all right, so let's get started. Remember, we're going to, we're gonna sew around the rectangle and then we're gonna stop, we're gonna leave a two inch opening, but we're, in each corner, we're gonna have a piece of that elastic. So the, the one goes inside like that and the other's gonna go inside like this. And it's gonna be flat and we wanna angle it. We wanna have it in there at an angle. So let's start right down here. And I mean, black thread will look just fine on this one. So let's get our elastic ready open this so open and we're going to put that right at an angle see that angle 
that goes at an angle. I hope this is close enough. Oh, I can. I think I can. No, I can't. So. Oops. Oops. I broke it. This whole twisty thing fell out. Yes, the this will be replay. Yes, yay, sheets. Yeah, cause you know, upcycle old things too. I don't. I'm. I wonder if dish towels would work. That could be, or even I've used like um, I've made a skirt and then I've hated it and I've turned it into some. Actually, that's the Cubs. I made a box pleats Cubs skirt and I'm like. I'm not gonna wear this skirt. Did I wear it? But no, it was way too long. So I cut off the bottom of the skirt and I hemmed it. Oh, which Tamika, thanks for the reminder. I will do a how to hem your pants class too. So um, make sure you're following um, maybe on Instagram or um, so so fab by Crystal or Fabby Crystal or just so so fab, it should be me. Um, and then YouTube, I'm going to get these on YouTube eventually. That might take a little longer. Um, okay. So back, we have this at the corner. There are a lot of ideas of, um, places to get fabric from even things you've never worn. You'd be surprised what you can turn it in, what you can turn, um, things into. So just, um, think outside the box on these because it doesn't take a really huge piece. All right, so we're going to come to this corner, and I'm going to reverse it. Yeah, there we go. And then come to the edge when it's right um, where these two concave in. Make sure the needle is down, lift, pivot. And then don't forget to have this other piece ready at an angle right here like this. Now for sterilization, like um, you can have them to sterilize these masks. They can either wash them and dry them or they can spray them down. Um, especially if you are not hand delivering too, because if you're mailing them, who knows? I mean, it's just going from the post office to you, but um, just, you can always spray with Lysol that, or the uh, rubbing alcohol or I'm not sure what else. Oh yeah, I wanna reverse this. Cause we do wanna be safe. Cause one person did ask, what if the person making the mask um, is sick, you know, or has germs? And we, this, the point of this is certainly not to pass on germs. Um, and look, see the machine kinda moves on its own. Oh, don't forget to put this other. Oh, look at this Buckeye, so cute. And again, I'm not selling these. These are all being donated. I will not accept money for these. You, thanks for keeping me company, you guys. What made you get into sewing on this level? Well, um, I've been sewing since high school. My mom taught me when I was in high school. She used to make all of her clothes. Um, and I learned, but, um, I quit because I made this, um, I made a three piece suit and it was like a flesh color and I got laughed out of school. So that's when I was like, okay, sewing is stupid. I quit. I'll just buy my clothes from now on. Um, but I did a, um, Jason Butler, he's really big into eBay and selling stuff. So if you have stuff around, you're noticing the more you're home, the more you can clean and get rid of stuff. Uh, he has great courses, um, the Butler Journal, um, on um, how to sell your stuff, like how to, which, which like Postmates, not Postmates, all the sites where you sell your stuff, he's tried them all out and like who's sketchy and, you know, how to spot a sketchy person. Like he knows all kind of tips on that. But me and him did a side hustle challenge. We challenged our readers to try to make some side money. And I was like, okay, I used to sell. Maybe I'll try to teach a class. Um, obviously it didn't like pick up and running cause I'm a full-time engineer. I do this on the weekends, but, and I took off today so I could, 
um, I saw this need. Um, but remember, we're leaving like a two inch opening here. And then needle out and take it out. Now we're gonna flip it inside out. But um, our challenge, I ended up losing the challenge too. But I was like, okay, there's a need for this. You know, there nobody signed up for my first class because nobody knew who I was. So I've learned a lot about just building the business. And plus, too, I was um, I saw this dress in a magazine that I really liked. It was a Nicole Miller dress. And I was like, man, that's the girl I want to be, you know, when I go on dates. Um, and I tried, I actually tried to find the dress, even though I knew, okay, it's not going to fit me like it fits her. Um, but my friend was like, I couldn't find the dress online either. So my friend was like, hey, Joanne Fabrics had that same Nicole Miller fabric on sale. And I was like, what? So I made my own version of that dress and I got so many compliments, um, you know, because it fit well. And I was like, okay, there has to be other people that want to learn this because it cost me like $20 to make, you know, a dress, a Nicole Miller-esque fitted, you know, custom fitted to me dress. So that's why I go, even this dress, this dress is only two pieces. Okay, this thing we're making is two pieces of fabric. This dress that I'm wearing is also only two pieces of fabric. Um, and it's maybe not even two yards of fabric that I paid maybe $10 total for. So um, it's, it's, it's a very good way to make my own customized wardrobe, you know, that fits me. And it, it's as long or as short as I want. Um, I've been, you know, evolving into more, adding more bells and whistles, but I started the business in 2016 and I haven't bought clothes since then either. So I've been um, making all my clothes but I don't. I can't do it alone. My friends help out so much. Um, I'm so grateful, especially Sandy and everybody else that's watching. Sherry Ann's watching. Tamika's watching. Khalif's watching. Like I get all the great feedback. Um, Aisha, Brandy, Tisha. Tisha's the one that told me about that sale of that on that fabric. And I was strutting my stuff in that dress, y'all. All right. So we have our square. We flip it inside out. And now we're gonna do our three folds. So just do just do one fold so you know which way you're going on each direction. There we go. I'm gonna do this. I guess I could use this as my fold. So here's one fold. Just so you know you're gonna fold in the same direction on both sides, I'm gonna put a clip right there and I'm gonna put a clip right there. What time does our happy hour start, you guys? Khalif? Because, yeah, I'm going to a happy hour after this. It's actually an in-home quarantine happy hour. It's my mastermind group. I, um, I got my microphone because I'm going to karaoke, whether they like it or not. I will be karaoke -ing. Thanks, you guys. You guys are the real MVPs. Thanks for all who shared, um, and thanks to for all who's watching. Um, I really appreciate you guys. We're on an hour. I didn't realize it'd been an hour. Time flies when you're having fun. So we're gonna finish this last one and sign off. Uh, but like I said, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wanna thank you and you and you and you and you. Cause I'm telling you, Oh, that bell on the floor. All right, so let's finish our fold. So we got one fold, just do one fold. And now we see how we're folding it. And then just fold, do, a, do another fold. Doesn't have to be huge, just do a fold. And a fold, a crease, ruffle crease. However you wanna call it. This is the only tricky part of it. I think they make a tool that'll fold it like that for you. See, I'm just doing, it's like three waves. The ocean spray waves, no copyright intended. No copyright infringement intended. So we have these. Need another clip. I am not getting up again. All right, so let's sew it. Nope. All right, fine. Put another clip right here. And then, so let's do our three 
on this side since we already know which one this which way that one's going let's just do the same one same way other one the same way we're not going to get it too close fold fold and fold there we go there we go so now we're gonna sew all the way around again I'm not my friend that works at the hospital she's a I'm from Chicago she's a Green Bay Packers fan I'm not making her a Green Bay Packers one I don't have that fabric anyway but I think that would break the machine sorry Packers fans same to Michigan Michigan would break the machine I don't recommend either of those fabrics so yeah, look at look how the machine just grabs it. It's your job to like you're just like more like quality control. All right. Remember that lift and that pivot? I'm trying to hold all these three down. There they go. Oh, perfect. That's gonna look cute. Oh, look how cute that is. Just making sure I'm not like my fingers won't go under there but they're just close hanging out close oh this is cute remember though the opening make oh already closed the opening I was gonna say make sure that opening is is closed because you see how it naturally folds in on its own hey Jennifer joined thank you guys what? My machine isn't worthy of Michigan. We got a troll in the group. Someone flag the troll as spam, please. We have ourselves a troll. Stage five troller. All right. One. Make sure these are flat. Remember, you're the one in control here. When you sew, don't be scared, don't be shy. You establish dominance, okay? It's, it's, it's you, okay? You show this fabric who's the boss. All right, what are you guys watching on Netflix? I need some, Sterling sent me a recommendation earlier. I need some more recommendations. Cause I like no background noise. I do hate when I'll, I'll be, um, I don't know, I'll be sewing something or doing something with the email list and then I look up, you know, like, you know, when you're not paying attention and you look up and something exciting happens and you're like, ah, oh, then you have to rewind it. That's like when, you, when you're reading and you get sleepy and you read the same paragraph 10 times. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm watching something, I'll rewind it like 10 times. All right, we're back at the beginning, but I'm gonna go all the way around a second time. I need to practice trying to get a stitch in a ditch anyway. This is a form of it. I want the lines to kind of match up. They don't, but it's made with love. That is all that matters. And if you want regular sewing lessons, I do have a learn to sew box on the website so so fab.com because right now we have in person well obviously right now we don't have in um we don't have in class visits classes in class classes in person classes right now we don't have in person classes but um i will be doing um more online classes weather permitting workload permitting um, but I did I took off work today so I could make some masks and then I'll be back on Sunday we'll either do more masks and then maybe afterwards we'll do um, the how to hem your pants because hemming is like a lot of times I hem I um, I like to shorten stuff um, a lot of people like to um, no, yeah, even though I'm tall, I do short and stuff. Um, we made it to the end of the second one. Oh, this is the part I hate. We're done. I'm going to keep making masks. Like I said, even if you're, well, 
don't cut and watch TV at the same time. Maybe you can cut, like, you can cut these guys. You can cut the, you, I, I trust you guys to cut. No, don't cut anything and watch TV at the same time. Let me see, cover my, you know what, CYA. All right, let's take this off. So needle has to come out. A lot of people wonder why the machine keeps unthreading. That's why, because if you don't make sure the needle is at the top, um, the reason is when, when the machine is going to sew, it always makes sure the needle starts at the top. Um, it's starting a new stitch. So sometimes if you, if you have leave the needle like all the way down here as you're taking it, the um, project away, it'll, it'll give you like, it'll pull back. Let me find that. Um, here's our um, sample piece. Or if you forget, just make sure you, you, you hold the threads down on this side. Because normally it'll grab the it'll grab thread from this half and suck it back in. That's what happens when it unthreads. So let's say I'm sewing and I want to take it off, take the, the fabric off. First of all, I lift the foot. I can't move this because the needle's in. All right, let's take it out a little bit. I still can't move it because look, and now I could break the needle. See how the needle is wobbling? Like you could break the needle when you you turn this so that it's all the way at the top. Now I could take it away, but if it's not all the way out, you can't even take the the fabric away. That's like the once you get that down and sewing, then um, you're on and popping. Well, thanks you guys. Thanks again for watching, Crystal from. Um, so fast. Oh, I can. Let's see. Let's go back to just solo. Yep. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I think the camera's here. Yep. There it is. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Um, please contact me if you need masks. Um, I am going to do another class on Sunday. I don't know about tomorrow. I'll let you guys go. No, but join my email list, sosofab.com. Um, if you want to know when I'm doing things like this, um, if you want to join my online classes too, because I do have a box, um, I don't have one handy, um, that it comes with everything. So it would come with um, maybe a yard of fabric or however much fabric you need. It would actually come with the uh, elastic already. It would come with some thread. So um, I send out projects. So if you want to learn, maybe I'll make one for the masks. Um, and you just pay for shipping um, or something like that um, we can do that too just because it's a good thing to learn um, and for kids if you want to make one of these for kids you would make that was what my little note was um, so for the adult size is six inches by nine inches but a kid size is seven and a half by five inches um, but the elastic might be a little too long seven inches might be too long for the kids so um, some people have tried six inches. I don't have any kids yet to try it on. So, um, one, um, not one day. Um, <laughs> well, we can figure that out. And also I did recommend you can always, um, for the kids, you could just do a little knot, you know, these little, the little knot after you make it, do a little knot, or you could do a little, one of those slider bead things, put a little bead on there too. So that's another option to, to make this a little more adjustable. All right. Thanks again for watching you guys. I cannot say how much I appreciate this. Um, even for trusting me with your time, like you, you could be doing a lot of other stuff, you know, a lot of times when I don't want to go hang out, I'm just like, look, the couch isn't going to sit on itself. I got to go sit on the couch. Like the TV's not going to watch itself. I got to go watch TV. Sorry. Um, so sometimes, you know, time is precious. All the time. Not sometimes. All the time. So I'm done rambling. Uh, thanks for watching. But so, so fab. S-E-W-S-O-F-A-B. And I'm Crystal um, leading you on this journey. So hopefully we can make a lot of masks. If so, everyone can commit to 10 um, my people who sew, you know who you are. Um, we can make 10 of these. Um, and we can drop them off somewhere. Like even if you drop them at a nursing home, you don't have to go in. You can spray them um, and tell them to wash them or you can wash them. Like just, you know, you, 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 we can do this. All right. Thanks, you guys. I don't know how to end it.